How are you? How are you, my darlings? This is Alive. And we're talking about beware these men. It's homosexual season. <laughs> I love this topic. I actually was really debating on whether I wanted to talk about this today. But I think we should have a little bit of fun. I'm a little bit ooh because it is raining a little bit. Ooh. Um, I don't mind a little bit of rain, uh, but um, I do love uh, it when it's nice and sunny. So I am going to spend some time talking to you, my darlings. <laughs> Okie dokie. Nice to see you, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So today we're talking about something that... Uh, Hopefully it's a little bit fun, but I really want you to take it very seriously because I find it a little bit funny, but <laughs> I do want you to take it very, very seriously because um, usually I choose a topic based on the kind of information I'm getting from my practice, from the academy. So I have a catch up with all of my coaches and let me know what's going on with, my, with the clients in the academy because as you know, I don't coach one-to-one -one anymore I have possibly maybe three clients a year and they're very special either because I've coached them before or they're VVIPs um, so my coaches and I they give me some feedback on what's going on in the academy and when I kind of pick up a theme of what's going on I know that uh, we're not being smart out here girls we're not being smart we're not being sensible <laughs> so my job is to alert you okay to all of the stuff that we need to know so that we can be really sensible and really smart and safe out here um unfortunately we live in a world where things don't the kind of men i want to talk about today they're not obvious they're not your obvious culprits you know there was a time when a hobo, a hobo was somebody who was homeless, they looked homeless, their clothes were torn and tattered and they looked like they haven't had a meal and they were out here in these streets and it was very clear to see. But unfortunately, we live in a feminized society now where men are feminized. Uh, I would probably say the majority of men are feminized and that uh, they... To be honest, there's kind of nothing new under the sun. Everything that is has always been. That's what the Bible tells us. So we know that they've always, these men have always existed. The difference is that we live in a world where shame is not currency that is used anymore. So, you know, there was a time when a man who didn't have anything to offer a woman would be ashamed of himself. Um, you know, he would, you know, be shamed by other men and he would, um, you know, have you know, he wouldn't be out here, you know. Um, now we have men who will gladly take a microphone and attest to how they are um, <laughs> what less. <laughs> God forgive me. Um, they will happily uh, say things like, you know, I don't provide for no woman or whatever. They, they will happily do that um, and actually uh, create a whole kind of world and universe around them where this is acceptable behavior. And so when you take shame away from uh, things that are shameful, um, things that are not worthy of respect, um, we, make, we normalize it. And as women, we, uh, we have you know, been kind of wary of the guy that looks a little bit dusty, but no one, oh, that's the rain. But no one ever taught us to look out for these kinds of men. And these men I call fake rich or fake okay. And I'm going to be telling you a few stories that have kind of come through my desk over the years that will help illustrate this kind of deception. Okay, and I just want us to be really aware because a lot of men, a lot of them, sadly, are not looking for love. They're looking for shelter, okay? <laughs> I need to I really did think this was going to be funny to me, but it kind of is. <laughs> a lot of men are looking for shelter. A lot of men are looking for a payday. Um, and so many of us don't get it. Like, we just don't get it. Uh, because we're mainly desperate, um, uninformed, and we're being deceived. You know, and no one is above deception. Not, not even I. Okay, not even not even me. We are all not above deception and some of this stuff is really good. So I want to talk about the first guy. We're going to call him Sean. Um, now Sean, he is, um, 
he's a entrepreneur consultant ceo he wears the best suits the like armani suits this guy is impressive he's handsome he's gorgeous um his suits are amazing i actually he walks into the room and everyone's like who that he's you know he's that guy he drives a huge mercedes a super expensive um and everything about this man is impressive everything about him he has an amazing apartment by the seaside he's doing well for himself and <sighs> he can't afford that lifestyle okay you can't afford it and this is why i always say to us girls i get it I get it. I, I get this is whole other place in this in this digital space that's teaching women to um, be preoccupied with what a man has and not what has the man. And here at the Black Storm Relationship Academy, I teach you to focus on what has a man, not what he has. What has him? What ha what? Forget what he's driving. What's driving the man? Because if you are going to focus on trinkets, you're going to get gotten real quick, real fast. Women who are preoccupied with the car a man drives, the house he lives in, they are fodder. And these men dress and, you know, it's, it's kind of like, uh, uh, what's the word? Um, it's a costume, cost dress. They cost dress for the for the man that we're all that women call high value and i hate 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 the narrative that a rich man is high value that is the most ridiculous thing i've ever heard and i hate that it's perpetuated on such massive scale because a rich guy could also be a pedophile he could also be a rapist he could i should be using these words should i he could also be all of these horrible things a rich man is not high value okay he's a rich guy a high value man is a man of high integrity. A high value man is a man whose word you can take to the bank and cash it. A high value man is a man that know, who's emotionally intelligent, a man who knows how to handle his emotions and his woman's emotions. A high value man is a man that seeks to take care of, to cherish, to ensure that his woman is well taken care of emotionally, spiritually, financially. A high value man is a man with a spirituality. A high value man is a man who knows how to cover a woman, put covering over her. A high value man is a man that works hard, a man who has ambition, a man with a vision, a man with a plan. This is a high value man. And he comes in different shapes and sizes. He comes with a different start point depending on his age, depending on how whatever, but he has a masculine mindset. I just need to stop hearing that rich men are high value because it just drives me crazy okay because what happens if he loses all his money what you got a horrible savage right what happens so we don't use high value term here to mean money no you if you think it means money you go and play with sprinkle sprinkle okay we're not we're not doing that here right we are exquisite, we're elegant, and we, we date men that have their act together, that they, they're together, okay? We don't entertain losers, all right? Um, but we don't confuse a high-value man for a rich, a rich man for a high-value man because it's how you get gotten, okay? Super, super careful. So go back to Sean. Sean is after the women who want money because he knows he's going to dangle this because often the women that want money from their men are usually women that either have their own money or they have something okay so he's gonna go for your professional he's gonna go for the nurse he's gonna go for the lawyer he's gonna go for the woman with a stable job her own place to stay and with her own stuff and this is sean's mo okay sean will go uh will have five girlfriends six maybe seven women on his roster He's going to borrow money from them because it's easy to lend to lend to to lend money to Sean because he has money. He just needs to borrow some money for now. So Sean's whole lifestyle, his suits, his 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 car, his apartment is paid for by one of these women who have their own home, who have their own careers, and it's easy. Sure, I'll I'll lend you a thousand pounds, a thousand dollars. Uh, because you have it. You just drove to my house 
in your Mercedes. Tinder swindler, thank you. And I, I think that when we saw that show, we thought, oh, it happened to her. It's happening to women at record levels, especially now um, because men have changed the game. You see, the gold digging homeless guy will always be here. He was here in my daddy's generation, his daddy's generation, and he's gonna be here uh, after we pass and go, okay? The only difference is he changes his game. Whenever you call out a player who's playing a game, he doesn't change the game, he, cha he doesn't change himself, he changes the game. That's why I teach you, don't bother calling out players, just don't entertain it, because he o he's only gonna change his game. Oh, I don't like it when you lie to me. He's just gonna pretend to be telling you the truth and keep another phone in this card that you'll never know anything of. Because this man is a low value man. This man is a low vibrational man. This man is a man who does not value himself, love himself, care about himself. So how can he give you what he does not have or even himself? So these men, they go through life scamming their way, manipulating and exploiting their way through everything in life, okay? So trying to change them is like trying to bring somebody to salvation, okay? And you trying to be Jesus, okay? You're not Jesus. So whenever you see a man that thinks that playing games is a way to access a woman's heart, you should just write him off as rotten eggs because he just simply does not have the operating system to even be a man of integrity, to even, he doesn't even have it. He, he's never developed the muscle of integrity. He's never developed the, the fortitude of masculinity. He doesn't have the wherewithal to be a man of substance. And so these men have just changed their game. They managed to get Sally to pay for their suits. They managed to get Jane to pay for the car. They managed to get, you know, what's her face to pay for, for the apartment and what's her face. And one of the things that um, Sean does is he actually lives with these women. This is why I called him a homosexual. So everything he has, his car, his apartment, everything uh, is not only expensive to get, but is very expensive to keep because to heat up his fancy apartment in the winters uh, or to keep the aircon on in the summers or to even just pay the bill for that apartment, the taxes that come with that apartment. He doesn't have that kind of money, okay? So what he did, what Sean does, is he will live with all six women. So on Monday, he sees Jane. On Tuesday, he sees Sal, and he sleeps in their homes. He eats their food. He burns their electricity. He literally allows them to not only lend the money, but to live in their homes. I want you to be careful because Sean is an entrepreneur. He is, um, <laughs> how long is he going to play that game for? Until the women wise up. Because guess what? They all want to feel special. And I had a client who came to me with a Sean situation and everything was dodgy. I knew, I knew from the beginning everything was dodgy. He was always borrowing money that he never paid back. He was always going to marry her and he never did. And this was a relationship that was a good five years. So these men can play this game for five, six, ten years. For as long as you refuse to accept the reality that you are in this situation. Because the thing is, ladies, we get it. We see it. That something is not right. This man keeps borrowing money from you and he never gives it back because there's always a business deal that he's doing and he always needs a little bit of this. So anyway, I, she, she, you know, she, I, I told her, look, he's, he's on something. Be careful. Don't do it. Uh, she wouldn't believe me. So I said to her, get a private investigator then. Hire someone to follow him around. Uh, I don't recommend this, but if you are truly delusional and, um, you know, you, you, you can't seem to believe what's going on, then hire somebody. And when she did, this is what emerged. He was leaving her house to go to her house. He was caught leaving a, a different woman's home every single day. And all of these women were financing his lifestyle. Beware this guy. And what you're gonna do, you're gonna date him like a black swan. You're gonna take your time. You're gonna let him invest. You're not gonna be giving him your money. And you're not gonna be letting him stay over. 
okay? Even if he does, he's got to go home and you need to see if there's a pattern. Does he only do your plays every Monday at the same time? Because they have to keep their, their rotations going, right? Look at his friends, all his friends were on that game, but she was com she was convinced that no, um, it, his friends are like that, but he's not like that. Of course, all his friends are like that. You have to date the black swan way. You have to have your standards. You have to have your boundaries, and you have to allow a man to invest. And they're going to invest hard. They're going to come into your life. They're going to invest hard. They're going to take you to the best places. Okay, can you maintain, sir? No, because guess what they do? They get you into bed and then they entertain you from the bedroom. So you think, oh, he's done all of these things for me before. He'll do them again. It's just that we're cozying up and lying on the sofa and everything is so nice. No, honey, he's broke. He's broke as a joke. He has no money. He hasn't got his uh, income from whatever girl who's refused to give it to him this week. And, you know, maybe he didn't pay his rent very well, you know. <laughs> I shall not explain what that means. But for those who are smart, you're going to know what that means. So a lot, we have to be smart in realizing how does this person actually make their income. And this is a game that entrepreneurial men make. Men who just don't have stable jobs. This is quite likely to be, somebody got it. I saw a laughing face that somebody got the message. Um, you really want to make sure that you understand how this man actually makes his money and don't be afraid to ask actual questions because if he's, you know, if the math is not mathing, it's not mathing. There's no way you can be living this kind of million dollar lifestyle, but you work over there and your business is not necessarily taking off and you're still at that hustle place where you're still trying to get the right deal. Ladies, if it doesn't make sense, it doesn't make sense. But if you are somebody who was easily impressed by shiny things and big cars and da da da, da you're going to get gotten and you're going to get gotten good. And the problem is for some countries where we're getting into winter, they're coming out in their hordes because that's just what's up. A lot of men are coming out to date for shelter. They want a place to live. Then I want you to be careful of the professional guy who has a job. He's a lawyer. He's, you know, somebody with a professional corporate job. I'll, I'll answer that question at the end because I don't want to be distracted. I will try and come back and answer that question. <laughs> then we have uh, Mr corporate professional. Now this has happened a lot and it comes a lot into my academy. This guy is going to date you. He's going to take you out. He's going to treat you really lovely and he's going to have a solid job and you're going to know he's got a solid job. He's got that job, but he lives beyond his means. He's terrible with money. And this is what typically happens. He will all of a sudden get an emergency where he, can he move in with you? Okay, so it's either going to be an emergency. Oh, babe, uh, I've got an emergency. Is it okay if I move in with you for a few months? <laughs> or just for a few weeks or a few days? I'm so sorry. I know it's not funny. It's just that it happens so much and I have this reflex of laughing at things that are awful. It's just terrible. So he's going to order, you know, I need to, can I just move in? You're going to have no problem with it because, well, he spends time at your house. He has his own place. He's got a job. So, of course, yeah, he's fixing his bathroom, whatever. And he has no desire to, um, he's never going to leave your house. He's not going to leave. I need to stop giggling. I think it's just so funny. I can't believe some of this behavior. It's, it's shocking. And if it wasn't happening at the rate that is happening right now, I wouldn't be doing this video. Okay. He's not going to leave. Yes, Suki Meeks. The answer has to be no, no, no. Look, think about it. He bypassed his mom, his sister, his, all of the people in his life, all of them, to move in with you. 
for all the people that are actually there in this world to help him out where he can stay somewhere he chose to move in with you. Why you? Doesn't he have anyone else? So why do you feel you can't say no? Then we have the other guy, similar, has a great job, but he hates it. And so he's out here dating, putting himself out here with the suits and the dirt, and he works for JP Morgan. I'm not saying, you know, I'm just giving these big names. And, you know, he's a banker and he's six foot whatever and he's dating you and he's taking care of you and he's doing all of these things. And then he was, he's so in love with you. He's so in love with you. His love for you is just so amazing. And so he wants you guys to move in together. And you think, oh, of course, of course, of course. And this has happened so many times. Okay, so there's the one that all of a sudden something happens and he needs to move in with you for a little bit. His bathroom is getting sorted. Okay. And he never leaves. He doesn't leave. Then we've got the one that moves you in with him. And then he quits his job. I cannot tell you how many women this happens to or even get married to these men once a man is established that you are financially secure and he wants to chase his little dream his little business or he wants to or he's just feminine and lazy and doesn't want to work uh and there's so many of these guys listen so many of these guys and some are going to say look i want to go back to uni i want to study so that i can earn enough to look after you hey greta to look after you and you know we can make more money if i go back to school you're going to be looking after him for years okay so you might want to ask um thank you darling you might want to ask, have you finished studying, you know? Listen, it happens to women, to men, that all of a sudden they need to go to school because if they go to school and get their PhD, you know, then they can be a better provider, okay? Or they get called into ministry, by the way. Yes, religious men do it all the time. All of a sudden, they have a calling. They've married you. They've got you hooked into whatever life, and now they've got a calling, okay? This happens all the time. A lot of these couples that you're seeing online, people, the man will look like he's leading things, but the woman is the one working like a donkey to provide. So be so careful. I, I really need you to follow protocol, okay? I need you to follow Black Swan protocol when you're dating. And what is Black Swan Protocol? It's in the dating playbook. It's in the dating masterclass. And I need you all to join the House of Swans, okay? This is, this is a non-negotiable. If you're going to be safe out here in these streets, I need you to join House of Swans. You have no idea how many women we saved in BSN. You have no idea how many women were going to be swindled and played in BSN. BSN was the old House of Swans, the Black Swan Nation, which is now the House of Swans, which is going to be launching soon, and you can get on the waiting list, Okay? The waiting list will be somewhere here, but you have to date in community. Those days where you just dated by yourself and worked it out, that's, your, that's very dangerous. You have to date in community. The amount of women in the last community that I had who would warn the other women because, thank you, Greta, because they had had that happen to them. The amount of games and scammers because it is no longer embarrassing or shameful for a man to depend on a woman for survival. It's no longer something that men used to be ashamed of. Men are quite happy to play the happy feminist and say, well, equal rights. I am telling you, ladies, you got to wake up because it's happening to beautiful, kind, sweet natured women who can't say no. Now, this one, the quit the job one, the one that wants to move you in, do not move in with a man you're not married to. And if you're married to that man, be very clear about his character, okay? Men will show you who they are from the gate. They're going to show you who they are, but you have to be willing to believe it. You have to be willing to see what they're showing you 
and go with it and you need a community and you need professionals and you need people to help you get eye clearance to to get you know to get the scales to fall off your eyes because this is not the environment where anybody should be doing this alone you shouldn't be trying to date alone this is why i'm creating the house of swans it's not because i need another job to do in my very busy life it's because i understand that there's so many women that are being left out from the support and the covering because they're dating without their fathers you're dating without older women that are wiser and smarter you're dating without comp proper support right and i don't want this for you because the predators are out the the they're out and they're ruthless a man in feminine energy is horrible he will have no mercy he will have no mercy i am telling you i have seen women ruined i remember a guy friend of mine when i was dating because i get on really well with men i have a lot of male friends i get on really well with men they kind of think of me as one of the boys in a way i know they'll still shag me if i offered but you know we have a we have a thing we just I, I i feel like one of the boys so i get to hear a lot and see a lot and one of my guy friends when i was still a single mom working three jobs breaking my back to be honorable because i'm like i said in my other video i've never looked to men to I don't expect men to pay my way. I expect my husband to cover me, to protect me. But until you're my husband, I just expect you to be a gentleman and, you know, pay for dates and just pay for experiences. But I don't expect you to take care of me in that way. And, you know, this has led to a big conversation on YouTube, but I don't know why it has to be a big conversation. Um, each to their own. Okay. So I'm the kind of woman who believes in the dignity of working and, and taking care of myself and my son. So I have three jobs, okay? Because no one ever came uh, into my life. Of course, if a man wants to take care of me and he says, look, I'm going to do it, I would happily do it. But at that time, I was a doormat. I wasn't a black swan. I didn't know how to date. So um, I just decided to do what my parents taught me to do, just be a woman of dignity and work hard. So I did that. And so I didn't want to raise a black boy in the, in the hood or, you know, with depriving him. I didn't want to be the single mom that didn't... That, robbed her son of a good life so i worked very hard and i had a home a two-bedroom house with a garden okay it was very expensive for me to run but I, I made the commitment because i wanted that for my son and so one of my guy friends comes to my house and is like wow and you know uh that house i got you know donated furniture from my church and i upholstered it myself so it was very beautiful but i literally ripped everything off the sofas and I did all the upholstery I sanded down everything because I'm that kind of person I like I like nice things and if I can't afford to buy them I'm going to create them it's just how it is so I do all of that and my guy friend comes to visit and my guy friends are great they'll take my weave out they'll take my braids out like we'll spend all day we have a good time right so he says to me Chengi I need you to be very careful because the men out here who are going to see this and come and want a piece of it but they're going to act like they love they like you and I was like horrified. And I said, but I am a struggling single mom. Like, why would anybody want to not come and make my burden lighter? Like I work seven, eight, nine, 14 days straight. Um, not only in, a, in three jobs, but then I've got to be mom. Why wouldn't a man want to come and just take care of me? Why wouldn't he want to? And because... Because when a man is in his feminine, he's not in his power. When a man is not in his masculine, he's not in his power. He is inward looking. He is looking out for himself. And I don't think men realize that to carry a man is different from a man carrying a woman. Okay, because a man won't even bring the feminine that the, that the feminine brings to the masculine. He's gonna bring all of the burden, all of the heartache. And that guy gave me game and he told me, and a lot of single mothers will be sitting here thinking, you know, this house, you know, is barely what I can afford. And this man's going to come and he's going to make my life better. No. Okay. We've got to wake up and realize that these men are predators. They have no mercy. They don't care that you have children. And I remember dating this one guy at the time and he said something like, I said to him, you know, when you come here, because he liked to come to my place, when you come here, life gets really expensive for me. You know what he said to me? He said, well, I'm just one extra mouth to feed. So obviously he had to go. Um, but that was the mentality. That was the mindset. 
I'm one I'm just one extra mouth to feed. There's they give themselves a reason to be that way. So I want you to know that you have to vet and vet very well. You can't be afraid of asking the hard questions. You can't tiptoe and dilly dally around these men. And they're in every continent, in every culture, in every listen, I take calls from all over the world. I'm talking from Asia to everywhere. And I guarantee you, this is not one culture's problem. These are a breed of men. These are a breed of men. Okay. And they are just multiplying because the masculine men don't have time to check them, right? They're multiplying. So a lot of women get married. I, there's actually a celebrity couple and it's happening right now. She got proposed to the other day. I shan't mention any names. Um, but if you know, you know, and she's like, <laughs> and I'm like, Oh, this guy's not marrying you, sis, because he wants, he loves you. He's lost everything and he's looking for his shelter. He's a celebrity hobo. And not only have you just been paying his bills, now he wants to marry you to secure his future. And we just need to wake up as women that there are men who actually, who want you for what you have. And so many women have got caught up taking care of a man while he pursues his dream and you will do the donkey work. I get a lot of calls as well from pastors who were counseling couples uh, and they kind of stuck. Uh, so they'll call me and say, Chengi, look, I've got this couple that I'm counseling. This is where I'm at. This is what's going on. What are your thoughts? What shall I do? And one pastor called me because, uh, <laughs> Basically, this woman, he, this is the same situation. He gets, um, gets her married, gives her two babies, then completely refuses to work. So she has to raise those two kids, go to work, and then come back and look after him, and then he cheats. And then you want to tell me, God hates divorce, blah, 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 blah. Divorce him. Divorce him right now. Right now, this minute. Because when those vows were said in the church that I promise to cherish you, I promise to take care of you, I promise to protect you. This is not what he's doing. People don't understand. When the vows are broken, the marriage ended. There are men that are looking for beasts of burden. And let me tell you something. I cannot tell you how many women I have met who have labored and taken care of. I had another client who told me she gave birth and two weeks later he told her to go and get a job because he's not going to look after her. While she was bleeding, postnatal, and they had a beautiful wedding. I really need you to wake up. I didn't even want to do this video because I don't like doing these videos because they're just so dark. <laughs> Okay, but when things keep coming to me, I have to say something. We need to wake up, okay? It is a non-negotiable to be with a non-provider man. It's a non-negotiable. If a man does not have a desire to take care of you, if he does not have a desire, he doesn't love you. A man who loves you, a man who truly loves you, wants to take care of you. It is his pleasure to take care of you. He's going to get his act together. He's going to work hard. He's going to do what it takes. He's going to do jobs he would never have thought he would do to take care of you. And we're so desperate out here that we're not seeing what's happening. And a lot of these gold digging men, a lot of these men don't necessarily come looking gold diggy. So they're quitting their jobs or losing their jobs and never going to get a new one. And these women are breaking their backs. You will break your back to look after a man because you do not have the biological and the psychological ability to penetrate the world in the way that a man with testosterone has. You do not even have the psychology. We do what we do as women because we have no choice. Not because we can do it. Not because it's built in us to do. And many women, I have had clients who, you know, when we're talking about 
the trauma, you know, the parents and the relationship they had with parents. The amount of women whose mothers died young at the age of 50 because the mothers were the, were the providers of the home. I can't tell you. I cannot tell you the volume. I know in my feel like, oh, but that's the exception to the rule. No, baby, it is almost the rule. The amount of women that are holding up households with men that are lazy, dream chasing, don't feel a sense of responsibility, and the amount of them that are chasing women, and you would think, oh my goodness, thank you. Oh my goodness, um, you are, <laughs> thank you. You are, um, you know, uh, I, I lost my train of thought. But we're just really in a position where we have to realize that this is so common and so many of us are walking right into it. I had another story of a pastor who's going to marry the, the congregant. Right after she bought all the furniture in his house, right after she took right care, good care of him and did everything that he needed. No one is above reproach. These men are in the church, they're in the mosques, they're in the streets, they're on the apps, they're at the party, they're at the bar, they're at the golf club, they're everywhere, everywhere. Okay? Wake up. Let's wake up and be astute. Because just because he looks shiny doesn't mean he has anything to offer you. Then we have the ones that live with mom because they can't afford to live by themselves. A lot of men are dating and doing, because they'd rather be roommates with a girl because then they can have sex as well. The whole move in thing, girls, I'm, I'm, we don't move in, okay? Unless I've got a ring on my finger, we're not moving in. If you wanna go move in, you go move in. But if you wanna move in with me so much, why can't you put a ring on it? Nobody, nobody better come to me talking about let's move in because that'll be a no. No, sir, we're not moving in. Don't be losers. Moving in is not the uh, pre, <laughs> it's not the preamble to marriage, okay? It's not. It's like, okay, what if we move in and then he knows how amazing I am as a wife and I really like play wife and then he will one day choose to put a ring on it. No. The, even the suggestion of let's move in for me is an insult. Why do you want to move me in? Why? If you want me to move in, there's something called a marriage. Because you may as well, if we get married, we'll move in. But guess what? I've got a commitment. Guess what? I've got extra protection and coverage. No. Don't you ever make the mistake of moving in with a guy. Because trust me, it is mainly financial for him. We don't need to do that. Be a high value woman. Be a woman of status. Be a woman of value. No. No. No is, is uh, what's wrong with no? Why are we so afraid to say no? No means no. Say no. If he loves you, he'll go and get a ring and put it on your finger. And then when you are moving in, and if you decide, okay, we're gonna move in, fine. I'm like, my, if you get an engagement ring and you have a wedding date and you wanna move in and that's your standard, you go do that. Okay, but get a ring and be clear about who's paying for what, because I'm not going to move in and, be, and have myself a financial burden. No, if I'm moving in with you, it is because you want to take care of me. Right. And if you move in with me it's because you want to take care of me at the level that I've become accustomed. Right. Why am I moving in with, I would rather move in with a bunch of strangers. If I can't afford to live alone, I will get a roommate. 
because then I don't have to mortgage out my body as well. Why do we not love ourselves? Why, why do we give ourselves away for free to losers? A man who is incapable of taking care of a woman is incapable of being a long-term partner. What are you doing? He can't even take care of himself. If you're dating for marriage and you are out here um, entertaining men who should be working on themselves instead of trying to get somebody to help them out, I have no problem supporting my husband because when I'm married, I don't have stuff. We have stuff. When we marry somebody, it's ours. I no longer stop being a wealthy woman. He stopped long, longer stop being a wealthy man. We are wealthy. That's marriage. The two will become one. But before then, what are we doing? What are we doing? What are we doing becoming his savior? What is it that has us all so desperate? That we're allowing these men to come in. Single moms, you are fodder. Because as far as they're concerned, it's just one mouth to feed. One extra mouth to feed. You already have a home. You're going to fight to keep the roof over the head of your children. So he knows you're never going to lose your home. What's going on? You know, the way to... Um, the way to overcome is to retract the ancient parts. There's a reason why things are the way that they have been. When we start to change things along the way, we get into problems. A lot of these hobos don't look like hobos. They don't sound like hobos. So we need to be careful. We need to run the protocols. We need to vet. We need to select. We need to ask the hard questions. We need to be present. We need to be aware. We need to vet, 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 and keep vetting. Now, somebody asked me earlier, how long will you date a guy before you get married? A year. I'm not walking down the aisle with you in less than a year. Because I want to see you. I want to see you as you are. You can ask me questions, darlings, if you want to. <laughs> because you, it takes nine months for pathological liar to start for his mask to fall off. So I need nine months. But I can get engaged with, if, I, if we are so in love. And God has said, he's the one. Oh, we're still in love and the Lord has just made it so known. You can put a ring on my finger in, the, in three weeks if you like, but we're not exchanging vows or anything until at least a year. Right? Because a ring is a, is a statement of serious intention to family and community, right? So you're making a very serious statement of, of intention that your intention is to marry me and to build a legacy with me and that you will not be dating anybody else. And, you know, this is the highest level of exclusivity. That's an engagement ring, a high level of exclusivity. Not this other exclusivity where we have to negotiate what that means. I mean, obviously, you know, they're different levels, but this is the highest level. So yes, if somebody feels this is what God has said, you're my wife, you can put a ring on your finger and then you have a year to figure out if he is who he says he is. I always, I was saying to my coaches the other day, I was saying, look, don't rush your clients' processes. If they have to stay on another six months, if they have to stay on another year, let them. Because what we're doing here is through this process that we're taking them through the Soulmate Attraction System course, let it take as long as it takes. Because ultimately, a year out of your life to work on yourself and heal some wounds is going to cost you 10, 20, 30 years of heartache and brokenness. Because a lot of people don't understand what marriage is. They don't understand what... It does to you when it's wrong. It is your undoing. And some people never recover. 
Some people never become Chengi. Some people never recover from horrible decisions in marriage and recover. Some people lose their minds. People don't understand the kind of mental health conditions that come from bad relationship decisions. And when you see people like myself who went through horrid situations and we become strong and tough and we, and we, we learn to love and give and be forgiving and sweet and feminine through all of it, we think that's what happens in general. It's not what happens in general. In general, people's psyches break. In general, people end up on full-time medication. In general, people die. In general. And I'm not talking about domestic violence. I'm talking about you having to take care of a grown man like he's a four-year-old. Any psychologist, any mental health professional worth their weight in gold. Dr. Gabor Marte was talking about that the other day. Trauma specialist. Women develop, uh, I forget the name, but diseases that kill them early when they have to take care of a man. Dr. Pat Allen talks about a woman having to occupy masculine energy. Breast cancer is one of the things that happens. We are not equipped to penetrate the world, get resources, nurture that world, do everything women do and more. We just are not equipped. You're better off being alone, taking care of your kids. Just do that, please. Because a man will burden you. A feminine energy man who thinks a woman is designed to take care of him, he will destroy your psychology. He will break you down. These men are dangerous. They're predators. You, I cannot tell you the stories. Like As I'm talking now, all the stories are coming to me. He will bankrupt you. I met this woman. I, she was a client and she had like a hundred thousand in her bank and she was very comfortable. He left her with cancer and nothing to her name. And he was a suited and booted, articulate, well-spoken man who had all of these things. He left her with nothing and she died young. I don't know how we as women will wake up to the reality that unless a man is, is in his masculine energy, he is dangerous to you as a woman. And unless you are in your feminine energy, you're dangerous to a man. It's a non-negotiable because a lot of us think that femininity is how I do my hair, how I do my makeup and how cute I look at all the soft life I have. It's a whole thing. It's a whole healing. It's a whole psychology. It's a whole understanding how to be in your womanhood in a feminine way. And when we don't, we are signing our early graves. The amount of sickness and illness that comes from choosing these lifestyles of these loser men who want a mother, it will be un your undoing. Arthritis, da da da, all of these diseases that women get as they get older is because they thought they could be the superhero and take care of a man because he came with a suit and he came with a car and he came shiny, but the man had nothing to offer he was not a husband some men are men they're not husbands not everyone on one knee is a husband what do you mean when you say you have no problem supporting your husband well i'm only going to give you my my personal perspective as a christian woman eve was given to adam as a helpmeet to support him in his work to make his work easier, to make his work lighter. It is not good for man to be alone. I shall make him a helpmeet. That is somebody who is competent and capable of supporting a man's vision, a man's purpose, and a man's dreams. So they have to be in alignment with what God has called me to do. Because there's no point if his dreams are going to take me away from my purpose, then he's not my husband. So my purpose and his purpose are aligned. So in my book, Position for I Do, How God Delivers Mr. Right, When You Live With Power and Purpose, you can get that on Amazon. I talk about Esther. Esther and Xerxes, King Xerxes were created before the foundation of the earth to save the Jews from annihilation. They had the same purpose, to save the Hebrews. One was in the palace and one was an orphan. 
their purpose was exactly the same. They had the same purpose, but different destinies, okay? So we need to understand the difference between one's destiny and one's purpose. So my purpose and my future husband's purpose, they're one. We have the same purpose, but we have different destinies. Mine is to do what I'm doing in this way. His destiny will look different or maybe very much the same, but our purpose will be the same to help 1 billion people have healthy relationships, to leave a legacy of healthy relationships. That will be his assignment, that'll be my assignment. It may look different in how destiny brings us together. But it is my job to really support him as he upholds the purpose for both of us, as he holds the heavy weight and does the heavy lifting, my job is to hold him up. My job is to support him. To make sure that psychologically he believes he can because I'm going to be his number one cheerleader. I'm going to be the one who believes in him more than anyone in the whole world. I'm going to be the one to speak life into him. I'm going to be the one to pray over him. I'm going to be the one to be ahead of him. I'm going to know his needs. I'm going to support him in every way possible because I am doing God's will. Like this is about assignments, about purpose. So that's what I mean. If you're going to marry a man and you don't have the spirit of support, you're not a wife. You are a liability. You are a parasite. And that's why we're going to do wife school when we, when we start House of Swans, okay? We're going to start wife school in the House of Swans, and I'll take that House of Swans through what it is to be a wife. If in your mind you're getting married to get what you can get, you're a parasite. You are useless and replaceable. A man must feel that he cannot fulfill his assignment completely and totally in the way that God wants him to fulfill it without you. If you're just here to take and, oh, he's got to pay my bills, uh, that's not what we're talking about. I know people think that's what I'm talking about. It's not what I'm talking about. A man must provide, must cover, he must protect, he must cherish, he must look after his woman so she is full and fruitful. And from her fruitfulness, he is able to eat and eat well. And he's able to find shade under her fruitfulness, under her, the wings, because he pours into her then he is taken care of. This is the dynamic. This is the divine order. If a man is not pouring into you, you're gonna be dry, your leaves are gonna be dry, you're not gonna be fruitful, right? So what that means, because I know this person may be asking, what does it mean about supporting your man financially? Everything I am and everything I have is given to me to support my husband should the Lord choose that marriage is for me. Because I might not have, I might not get married. And I know for some of us it's crazy, but I don't believe that. I believe I'm here to fulfill my purpose. There's a reason why God brought me, and I'm fulfilling my purpose, and I'm working in my assignment. And that may not require a husband. But should the Lord decide that, okay, Chengi, you need a husband to fulfill the next level of your assignment, then everything I am and everything I have is to support him not because he's stupid or lazy or incompetent or incapable but because he has reached his peak without me and now he needs me to support him he needs me to to push so that we together like Esther and King Xerxes are able to fulfill the assignment so I don't believe as a married woman who was married somebody that God has told me and 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 signed off on being my husband that I won't support him financially because guess what? What if he takes a risk and loses so much? I'll, I've got him. I got your back. I'll cover the mortgage. I'll cover the bills because I know you're a hardworking man. I know you have ambition. I know that you have taken care of me from the day we met. I'm not going to abandon you. I'm going to support you. I'm going to take care. I'm going to have your back because anyone that marries me is married to a warrior, I will strap up and go to war with my husband. Let me tell you something. I come from a tribe of women called the Chiheras. And within that tribe of women, we are the only women in my culture, in my African culture, who actually go to war with their men. We strap up and we go to war with our men. We don't stay at home, okay? We're warrior queens. We go to war. It runs through my blood. You will never be my man and I won't fight for you and with you. That's what's up. That's why I don't give myself freely or easily. That's why you can't sweet talk me into anything because I know what I bring to the table. I know who I am. I know I will fight for you and with you. 
So I don't offer myself freely or cheaply to anybody. And neither do I make myself accessible. Because when you know your value, when you know who you are, when you finally realize that you are complete as a woman and that in you, God has put everything pertaining to life and godliness, like you are complete and that is you are a gift. Because Eve was given as a gift, as a whole gift, nothing broken in her. She was a whole gift that would make him better so that he would fulfill his assignment and that their assignment would be done. So when you know your value, you don't waste time with losers. You don't sit around waiting for him to call you. If I have to wait for you to call me and be checking my phone, you, you, ha you, you, can't, you, can't, you can't be my husband. You're not worthy. You're not worthy because I'm a woman who, who stands by my word. I call myself to a high level of integrity. So you've got to know who you are. So yes, that's what I mean by supporting my husband. And that's why not everybody can be my husband. And that's why not everybody can be my boyfriend. And that's why you can't sweet talk me into foolishness, right? Because it's taken me a long time. I'm 47. I'm not 27. <laughs> I've lived a bit, seen a bit, made a heck of a lot of mistakes and come to the other side. And I'm still on the other side. So you've got to know your value. You've got to know your worth. And then you've got to know what you bring. And so when a man is out here saying he has to move in with you, you already know we're not doing that. I can't fight for a man who can't fight for himself. I won't. I won't strap up and go to war with a man who's never fought a battle. who's never had to fight through life. He's just been going from woman to woman to woman to woman and to woman to woman to woman to eat. That's never gonna work. So be careful who you marry so that when it's time to support him, when it's time to give, lend him your strength and your power, he's a, a man that is worthy. He's a man that is worthy, has proven to you over and over and over that he's got you. And even when you're helping him, he feels some kind of way because, you know, he wants to get back on his feet. He wants to, you know, recover. Not some loser that could never get himself up off his knees from the beginning. Currently on a flight to Miami. Yay. From London. Oh, I wish I was in London. Instead of watching movies, I'm tuning in live. Keep empowering and educating women. You're truly walking your purpose. Thank you so much. Smile. Life is too short. Love that. Beautiful handle. What relationship would a black, would a black swan way have with exes? Cut off or does it depend on the length of the relationship, how it ended? I do not believe in keeping exes in your life. We need to end things for new things to begin. Unless a seed falls to the ground and dies, you can bear no fruit. Let it end. Because the truth of the matter is the fact that he's an ex means that that relationship has ended. So what are we trying to hold on to? If he wants to throw his hat in the ring, let him pursue you. He's starting from the back of the queue. Let him pursue you. But I don't believe in keeping these relationships going because they become tomorrow's toxic problem in your next relationship and they keep this energetic string in your life where you don't really ever let go of him and you never really open your heart to somebody new so i if you're an ex of mine you're pretty much dead to me the only man in my life who's an ex um and when i say dead to me i don't mean because i'm mad or angry or bitter block delete goodbye i say my goodbyes in the sweetest most loving way um, we always end amicably because we don't need the drama. I'm too old for that. Um, and then I don't need to ever talk to you again. And if I see you on the street, you'll get a hug and a kiss on both cheeks. But that's about it. Like, because we didn't fight, right? So I don't think, I don't believe in acrimonious breakups. Um, but there should be an ending. There should be a completion to a relationship. Because I owe that to my husband. I owe it to the man that is going to cherish me and take the best care of me. He deserves a woman who's fully in and not having these little strings attached to old loves. So for me, that is the black swan way. And I would 
like I said, I've only got one guy and that's my ex-husband because we have a child together. <laughs> Trust me, if we did not have a child together, there would be no reason for me to ever contact him or know what he's doing, where he is or what, you know, but we have a child together and, uh, you know, for the sake of my son, we, 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 uh, we are civil and we are kind to each other, um, because of him and, uh, because we're grown too. We've been divorced for 14 years. We, you know, we're over a lot of it. And uh, that's fine, you know, and I think any man would understand that. But my son is now over 18, so I, I don't need as much contact as I needed before. Um, so even with that, there will be less and less contact unless I need to have it. But that's the only reason you should be in contact with ex is if you have a child or a pet together that, you know, maybe you share custody. I know, um, you know, that can be difficult for people. I'm not a pet person I don't have pets um, but for those who do I know that matters so unless you have a pet together a dog or a cat that you had together that you need to arrange um, and talk about stuff concerning or a child I don't see any reason why you should be together because that is going to show up as a problem uh, in your next relationship and it might even hinder you getting a new relationship true not everyone comes out strong unfortunately we have no idea how many women come out of relationships broken beyond beyond repair we have no idea we have no idea we have no idea i would hazard to say 80 percent of mental health is somehow rooted in relationship a lot of the depression a lot of us have bad relationships relationships are life and they did a, a study and they realized that happiness is directly proportional to the people that you have in your life. The relationships you have. Your relationships can create so much joy and happiness and they can also strip you bare. And if you're with a manipulator, an exploiter, which is only going to be the guy who wants to use you for money or for, uh, for shelter, he's only ever going to break you down. And, and, and you will... Some women never recover. We don't talk about the ones that don't recover. We talk about the women like me. We talk about the women that were resilient and managed to somehow. And honestly, I, I am what I am by the grace of God because I was such a shell of the woman that I am today. I, was, I had lost myself. It, it, I was mentally broken. But God kept me together. Like broken pieces that he kind of held in this this state and then took many years to piece me back together again but what if you don't know god what if you don't have that relationship with god i had nobody couldn't afford therapy didn't even know i could get coaching and if i could i probably couldn't afford it i was raising a son by myself i was i i can tell you stories i can tell you stories about my life and it will you you will be shocked what i have been through Some people don't, they don't survive that. Many don't survive it. We don't tell the story of the women that don't survive it. And that's why I'm here. That's why I was sent. And that's why I went through what I went through because until God will always send you to the, to the places you've been and to the people who are about to make those mistakes, who've made those mistakes and need you. Your purpose and your pain are married. For those of you who don't know what your purpose is, look at your pain. How do I become more feminine to attract a masculine man? Oh, girl, that is a that is um, you have to heal. The only reason women become masculine is because of trauma. When the feminine is wounded, the masculine's job is to protect. If there is no masculine in your life or masculine you can trust or the masculine is the perpetrator, you lean more into your masculine energy to become your protector. And when you've only ever felt safe when you're leaning into your masculine energy, you're never going to let that guard down. Nothing I tell you. I, if I tell you, go change your hair, change your clothes, you might do that. 
okay? Uh, but if we start to, if I say submit, you're going to cry. If I say yield, you're going to cry. Surrender, you're going to cry because you, no. But yielding, submission, surrender, these are all femininity things. Vulnerability. If those things frighten you, then we need to heal before we can even begin to build and call you back into your feminine. So there is no um, pill that I can give you. All I'm going to say is it's a process and it's a journey and for each and every one of us is different. And this is why the Black Strong Relationship Academy exists because my job and my assignment is to take you from where you are to your divine feminine to exactly how you were supposed to be to factory settings and then help you develop the skills and the tools to manage that because vulnerability and submission and surrender have to be protected but we have to protect them in such a way that we can let down our guard when we recognize a masculine man okay um i did a masterclass this weekend the truth the hidden truth about men their money and sex and we just covered power uh the next masterclass will be in the house of swans only and i'm going to be talking about their money and we're going to talk a little bit more about that but identifying a masculine man is not easy for a lot of women because number one they're not enough of them running around for us to see uh they're not loud people they're not in your face masculine men very uh, very much head ha head down you know they 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 they're fighting in the world. They're, they're watching our borders right now. They are making sure that we're safe. They're doing a lot of heavy lifting. They're not on podcasts talking about these women, right? Masculine energy men are, um, they're doing the hard work. So you're not going to kind of see them around being loud and noisy and annoying, right? Uh, so when you don't have a mirror or model of that, and you meet a masculine man and eventually pops his head out and chooses you, you're not going to recognize him being masculine. You're not going to recognize it because what's being put in front of you are a lot of feminine men with six pack and big shoulders who were girls inside, but you think they're masculine because that's what you've been shown, right? Or men with money. Uh, and then you're going to think, oh, he's masculine when it's just really a feminine rich guy. Okay. So, there's, there's, this is a layered conversation. This is a journey. And this is why you need to be in the House of Swans because we're going to take that journey. We're going to take that journey together. We're going to take it. And then you're going to be able to ask your questions. And you're going to get the help and the support. Or you book a call with one of our coaches. But beyond that, in the book that I'm supposed to be writing, you can also get the Feminine Mastery Masterclass, both the Dark and Light Feminine Energy. Um, and you can watch my playlist on YouTube called feminine energy okay uh so i've got a whole playlist where i've done a lot of videos where you can begin so these are all free resources uh but if you want to take your your journey to the next level and you really want to be the embodiment of femininity um not just look feminine not just signal feminine not just say the right feminine things but be the embodiment of femininity then you're gonna need to take a journey that is a little bit more invested Exactly. I don't become, you don't become more feminine just for a man. It's deeper than that. Take the journey for yourself. I think we might have a future Black Swan coach here. <laughs> Thank you. Not every man on one knee is a husband. No, uh, many men on these one knees are looking for shelter. <laughs> They're looking for mom and they'll marry you to um, secure the bag. What is leading to this pandemic? <laughs> like, how do we raise masculine men as women? Um, I think that uh, there's a kind of broader conversation around living in a world where we are allowing, we are become, we're, we're creating space for ideas and concepts and thoughts that have never, that have not pre-existed. Um, 
we're, we're questioning everything and I think that's a beautiful thing. We're questioning the status quo. We're questioning why things have to be the way they are. And I think that in all generations when we question, it's really a moment for elevation, but not all of us know how to handle it. And when we question things, sometimes we create new normals that are actually defunct. So I, I believe that there's a breakdown of culture that is necessary that is happening that is absolutely necessary and i really believe that when the dust settles um a lot of people will be better off for instance with all of the noise going on on the internet we're getting more two-parent households and more reports of happy relationships and marriages than we've ever done in history so whilst it seems like the world is falling apart what we're actually doing is spring cleaning the house Everything is messy when you're spring cleaning. It just feels like everything is everywhere. But actually, we're getting to the, to the bits that were swept under the rug. And now we're demanding of our relationships to be healthy. We're demanding that our relationships be fulfilling. We're demanding that our relationships have more meaning, more purpose, and, 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 and have more kindness. And for that to happen, we are having to break down a lot of set mindsets, rigid mindsets, and a lot of people are not going to like it. So there's going to be a season of upheaval and we have to be okay with it. We have to allow it to happen. And with that is going to throw up a lot of these kind of toxic feminine men who are just whatever. But the really good news is I find Gen Z's, what also is happening is we're going to have a separation of feminine men who are proud of it and they're going to be very clear right now we can see them in the red pill space like any man that's red pill is really a man who's simply sitting in his feminine um and uh we're going to be able to really identify okay that is a feminine guy so i'm not even interested in you're going to get used to the lingo the rhetoric they all have this top tier man da, da, da. they all have these you know uh rhetoric uh, and we'll be able to identify them. Then there's a whole breed of really masculine men who are really speaking up now. Uh, a lot of them, a lot of masculine energy men who are speaking up. And for me, there's just going to be a very clear divide and you, we're going to be able to know the difference. But for now, it feels like it's everywhere. I have a video on my channel called How to Raise Boys into Masculine Men. Um, and you can watch that on my YouTube channel where I talk about as a mother, learning to show your son respect um, a boy after the age of 10 requires respect how does that look for him and when you model respect for him he uh and, and you um which is a really big thing once he gets used to being you see a lot of gold digger men don't want to be respected they want to be cherished um because they were cherished but never respected by their mothers when a man craves respect, he's mainly in his masculine. A man that craves respect will work hard, he'll be ambitious, he'll be focused, he'll have all of these things. But a lot of feminine energy men want to be cherished because that's what they were demonstrated in their home. So as a, a mom raising a boy, you must first teach him what respect feels like from you. He must understand how it is to be spoken to with respect. And, and, and how to respect his voice. And I talk about what that looks like practically every day raising a boy, because my son is very masculine. Um, and that is because I remembered, I, I did a lot of study because I'm a, I'm a geek and I'm, I'm terrible. I'll read 20 books just to do one thing because I want to do it right. And I didn't want to bring another feminine, annoying man into the world. <laughs> he, um, so he's very much in tune with his feminine and masculine. He knows when to be masculine because I raised him that way. So it's perfectly possible as a single mom to raise a masculine son. But I also didn't stop him from spending time with his father because I knew that as a woman, there's only so much I can do. So, you know, it's, 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 you've got to, uh, you know, and when he came of a certain age, he went to live with his father so that he could really uh, dig deep into his manhood. Uh, a man needs his mother up to the age of 10, and after the age of 10, he doesn't need to be with his mother anymore. He needs to be with his father, and he needs to be in, in masculine spaces in order to develop his manhood. But before then, in order for him to have a healthy relationship with his feminine, he needs mom, because up to the age of 10, they need to be cuddled, they need to be loved, they need to be all of these things, boys and girls. Um, so, uh, you know, a lot of men didn't get that, they, they didn't get the cuddles, the loves, the, the tenderness and the nurturing up to the age of 10. So that's where you get this closed off emotionally, unable to communicate this kind of broken masculinity, um, 
So there are a lot of pieces that that need to be in play for a man to become a healthy masculine. And for the most part, I think definitely looking at my mother's generation and some of the women in my generation, baby boomers, the Gen Xs, um, there was a lot of bitterness and a lot of anger and we kept our kids away from their fathers or we spoke down to their fathers. You know, I uh, am very careful when I speak to my son about his dad the words I use because men identify with their fathers. So if I think nothing of his dad and he's able to see the flaws in his, in his father, he's able to understand, you know, um, where his father, you know, why we didn't, we didn't work out without me having to say it. So it takes a lot of discipline from the woman, a lot of love, a lot of wisdom, but there is a video. And again, we can talk about it in the house of swans. Should you join? But yes, um, we, we shouldn't despair. I think that, we should be okay with the fact that there will be two different types of humans. I mean, it'll be more complex than that, but I think that the divide uh, is going to be very clear soon and it will be an easy navigation system. But for now, hello, Yemi. How are you? Yemi Bolts. Yes, your purpose and your pain are married. Yes, indeed. Your purpose is in your pain. Okay. Um, thank you for your answers to on access. Can you speak about purpose and pain? Because it hit me, but I do not understand. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to figure out if I should come from a biblical perspective or just a general one because I don't really know who's watching uh, whatever problem purpose the simple definition of purpose is why am I here purpose is why am I here and who am I here to serve so why am I here is always going to be who am I here to serve whose problem is I, am I here to fix it's not your <laughs> it's not your job your job is uh, to fix someone's problem so you can earn money okay fantastic it's not your career uh and sometimes your purpose and your career can be intertwined my career my purpose are, the, are kind of the same thing um so it is possible but most times your purpose is why whose problem are you here to fix you see what well, this is what happens god looks through time he, he's not in time he looks at time so he's looking down at time and he sees that at this point in, in man's history not his or story this is gonna come up so going back to esther and xerxes oh this is gonna come up not oh for him because he knows it's gonna come up but he can see that that's gonna come up and then he will give birth to you 20 years 30 years earlier and then he's gonna take you through a horrible process <laughs> okay and that process is to refine you and to keep you humble and to keep you hidden. Okay, so uh, let's go to Joseph. Joseph, the, the Technicolor Code. Everybody knows the story of Joseph, even if you're not religious. You know that story, I hope. And, uh, you know, he's told, okay, you're going to be the so big person and your father and everybody's going to bow. So, you know, he shows you. But in, in, in the vision, the purpose is not clear. But Joseph was born... For the simple, simple, very simple reason to make sure that his family didn't die and that his family represented Israel. So Joseph has to go through all of these things and through his pain, um, there's so many things that he has to learn. So he gets sold into part of his house and he learns to manage things, right? Uh, and he's treated unfairly so that he can be ready to forgive them up the road. And he goes through all of this famine before the famine comes. So he goes through an emotional famine, overcomes it before the famine comes. And along the way, his gifts grow and his uh, talents and abilities grow. And, you know, uh, his pain leads him to a place where uh, he eventually becomes the Joseph that is now ready to be taken out of, uh, uh, out of prison to become uh, the, the king. Uh, to become the prime minister and then his purpose begins but it was rooted in in his journey so what we do is we want to circumvent the journey and the pain because we want it over with because it hurts so bad and so hard um, you know 
I'll give myself as an example, because the journey itself, the pain itself is teaching you something. So whilst my professional career helping women with relationships officially started business-wise eight years ago, it's something that I did since I was eight, my mom being my first client and telling me about her relationship with my dad and then other women coming to me and uh, and then becoming a makeup artist who didn't make sense and struggling through that and all my struggles and then having to go through the pain of most women so I would understand, only to realize that on the other side, it was actually everything I'd been through that I'm helping women through. So your your purpose is, will will be clear when you look back in retrospect. What have I been through? Somebody else is going through it. Okay. And I know that road. I know it so well. So I'm able to use everything I've learned and shorten the gap. So I always say to the women uh, that come to the academy, look, you can do the 20 years I've done of pain and suffering, or you can do three months or six months. Your job is to condense the journey for others so that they don't have to go through what you've been through. Sometimes we're looking for a purpose. Oh, what do I love? What am I passionate about? What do I really, really enjoy doing? That's great. Uh, that could be your career. But where have I been? And what do I never want anybody else to ever go through? You know, and if you're coming, if you are truly going to walk in your purpose, you have to emerge a forgiving person. You have to emerge wiser. There's so much that you know, it teaches you. So I hope I've answered that because in my mind, a million and one examples, and I don't want to get into it too much, but I would say that what, what have I endured? What have I suffered and overcome? Because somebody else is going through it and it's my job to make sure they don't have to go through it if they don't have to. Who, who did you need the most when you were going through what you were going through? For me, I needed me the most. I wish I, I wish there was a Chengi for me. That's who I've created for you. The woman I hoped was there for me at that point in my journey and that point in my journey who wasn't there. And I had to be that for myself. So my journey took 20 years. Whereas if I'd had a Chengi, it would have taken six months or a year, right? So when you go through your life, whether it's poverty, whether it's whatever you've been through, whether it's, sexual assault, whatever you've been through, who did you need and be that? And that's your purpose. And then your assignment will take different shapes and forms. My assignment right now is relationships. My assignment right now is to be here talking to you, but my assignment could very well change and I could still fulfill my purpose, but have a completely different assignment. I actually have a group called High Valley Girls Pray, and in there I did a whole series, like probably like six or seven videos, um, of talking about destiny and purpose and how to find your purpose. It's in it's in that group. You just have to go in and search. I feel a desire. I feel I desire a male life partner in some way, but I'm not necessarily sure I want a husband. Thoughts on that? You know, um, that's fine. Uh, that's called mating. So um, there are there are levels to everything. Mating is finding a person for you who meets your emotional needs, your physical needs, but you don't want the contract. You don't want the marriage contract and you don't want the kind of implied contracts that come with that. That's fine. Um, when we're talking about husband and wife, we're really elevating the conversation for black swans at least to spirituality. Marriage is a spiritual concept and it started off a spiritual concept until the state got involved. Marriage was never for the state. It was never a legal thing. It was a church thing. It was a spiritual concept. Uh, then it got formalized because it made sense and it would help the state manage da, da 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 But it was never started off as a physical thing. So if you, like I said earlier, what is your purpose? What is your assignment? 
If it doesn't need a husband, then don't get married. If it needs a husband, marry. Like I said, I, if my purpose and my assignment do not require a husband, I will not get married. Uh, but if God says it needs a husband, then I will get married. And that person has to be in alignment with my purpose, right? And vice versa. Um, for you, if you just want somebody to meet your sexual and emotional needs, then you can do that. I say you can do that not because I'm giving you permission, because it is above my pay grade to give that permission because I don't know your religion if you have one. I don't know, um, you know, I am somebody who's governed by Christianity and the word of God to a degree where I just know what God has to say about stuff. So if for you, this is not a consideration, you're not a Christian or it's not important to you, then there's no reason why you cannot have a mating relationship. A lot of people have them. Um, but the morality of that, that's going to be up to you. I, I don't make any judgments about people's morality. I just know what, what mine is. So, yeah, you can have a mate. Uh, a lot of people mate. A lot of people uh, have children and mate without a contract. So, you can do that. Talk a little bit about father wounds. I would love to, uh, but I'll be here all day. A lot of that, if you go to my YouTube channel, I talk about father wounds, mother wounds, sibling wounds. Um, and I think I have a video with Bishop R.C. Blake's talking about the father wound as well. So please go watch that uh, on my channel, Black Swan Relationship Academy. Uh, you will find all the content on that. Right? I think we're done here. <laughs> wow, we. Uh, last time I think I did two hours. I have no idea how long I've been here. But thank you so much for joining me. And be careful out there, girls. Um, not everything that glitters is gold. Uh, don't get gotten. Uh, make sure that you know what you're doing, don't make things up, and you're going to be safe, as safe as you can be. If you get gotten and you did all the right things, then, well, you are supposed to learn something from that. But if you get gotten because you didn't want to pay attention or listen, then it's going to sting, okay? But I'm still going to be here for you. I'm going to be here for you. My coaches are going to be here for you. Join the waiting list. Uh, I will make sure that it's in the description, okay? Get on there and let's get you into the House of Swans and let's begin this journey. <laughs> in the meantime, my loves, take care of you. Love you lots.